I'm not gonna lie, when I saw what I have for my October TBR in physical form, and knowing that it's not everything, ah. Uh, Look, it's a good job I'm pretty, because I don't know if I'm going to get everything done in October. Hi, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. Today I'm going to be talking about my October TBR and what I plan on doing in October as well. I am genuinely so excited for certain things that are happening in October. Oh my gosh, I've been dreaming, I've been planning, I've been plotting. Oh, there's just so much to get to. But anyway, I do want to talk about what I'm going to be reading. There are several readathons happening in October as well that I would like to partake in. And by partake, I do mean very loosely because I just have so much I need to do. And as I said in my previous TBR video, readathons have burned me out, so I don't plan on taking part in too much. But, you know, just knowing that they're there in the background, knowing that the community is still thriving and there are so many people on board with so many of them, it's going to inspire me to take part as well. Yeah, there are quite a few happening. I will link some in the description box. But yeah, let's talk about what I'm reading then. So everything I'm reading in October essentially correlates with a video idea that I'm doing. So I mentioned in my previous video that I'm doing a sort of vlogs of Halloween event thing where I'm going to try and upload a vlog every week leading up to Halloween that have spooky vibes and will get you hyped for Halloween. So already we've kind of gone off the beaten track and gone off schedule. <laughs> Last month I had my Dracula vlog go up on time. I pushed my Goosebumps Horrorland vlog forward a week. I did a Chronicles of Narnia vlog just for funsies. I did my Sabrina the Teenage Witch vlog which went up a day early, not gonna lie. And then I also did the first saga of One Piece. So that's five vlogs in September and I'm currently working on my Witchy Books vlog which should be going up in a few days. Still need to finish the Witches of Eastwick but you know it's only the 27th today so there's plenty of time but I am continuing the spooky fall themed vlogs in October and I have four vlogs that I want to do so that means I have a whole bunch of books that I'm reading for them. So it doesn't give me any leeway into reading books for fun. <laughs> Although I will say that these do look fun and like I chose to do these vlogs because I think they'll be a fun time and because I'm excited to do them. But yeah, it means that I don't think I've got time for like anything else, essentially. Uh, especially the first one. So the first one, I'm not gonna lie, I wanna see how it goes for the first few days, whether or not I can get it done. But it's really important for me to get this one done in October. And the first books are the entire... Walking Dead graphic novel series by Robert Kirkman, Charlie Adlard, Tony Moore, and Cliff Rathburn. That's what it says on the front anyway. So yeah, there are four compendiums of The Walking Dead. I'm just gonna hold one of them up because, oh my god, they're heavy. But I believe there are 32 volumes over these four compendiums, so it doesn't actually seem that bad. And it is gra- well, I don't wanna, you know what, I don't wanna go to a random page and accidentally spoil something. It is all graphic novels, so it isn't as bad as it looks, but I do think I'm gonna have to take quite some time reading these. And I didn't quite anticipate that when I initially mentioned that I was going to be reading all of The Walking Dead. I still definitely, definitely want to do it though because the TV show is ending in November. And I really want to read all of The Walking Dead comics before that happens. I haven't watched the show since the season 7 premiere. I did used to be obsessed with The Walking Dead, I think from seasons 1 through 5. I was just obsessed absolutely obsessed it was my favorite show and i haven't really watched it since season seven but i do want to get back to it at some point i do still have a huge love for the walking dead franchise so i do believe i started reading these back in 2013 i think when i got this volume and for some reason never continued so this is about a zombie apocalypse we follow rick grimes and he's trying to find his family after he wakes up from a coma in this zombie apocalyptic world. Fantastic series, honestly. I guess I just absolutely adore the first five seasons. It had its ups and downs even in those seasons, but just, oh, peak television for me. But yeah, that's Compendium 1, Compendium 2, <laughs> Compendium 3, and Compendium 4. And I think all of these are over a thousand pages. So that's like 4,000 pages of graphic novels to read. And I wanna see if I can try and get them read in two days each, I think. I think there are eight volumes per compendium. So if I can just read like maybe four, volumes a day. I think it's doable. I genuinely think it's doable. Whether or not I get any other videos done during that time, it's a question I'm not willing to answer. Now, I've already had to reshuffle that schedule I put up on my community tab a few weeks back. And following The Walking Dead, I will have to do the Chillingham Castle vlog. So if you don't know, I am staying for three nights in the most haunted castle in England to read horror books. I have a whole apartment booked for myself. And for three nights, I'm staying there and I'm going to try and explore the castle, go in the dungeon, explore the grounds, read horror books. And I think it's just going to be an absolutely fantastic fun time. That is the video I'm so looking forward to 
to make in the most. It makes me feel so creative and so passionate about creating content for booktube. So it's just going to be the best time. I'm so excited. I have so many ideas. But the four books that I kind of want to read during that time and I think I've picked books that I haven't really heard anybody else talk about. And the first one is a bit of a jokey one that, oh, should I keep it secret? No, I'll, I'll tell you about it. But the first one I want to read is like a really silly one called Ghost Dick Private Eye. I have no idea what it's about, but it's kind of a bit like, you know, The Perfect Poo, where it's like just absolutely silly and stupid, but it's like the funniest thing ever. I feel like this is the same about a ghost encounter that might be sexual. I, don't, I genuinely don't know. Because on the back it just says, thanks for buying this book and for skipping straight to the back cover to see my face. That's judgmental and wrong. <laughs> just like, there's no summary to tell you what it's about. It just says ghost dick. But I am buddy reading this with one of my friends, Jess. And Jess brought it to my attention. And I was just like, you know what? Absolutely. I feel like this will break so much of the tension while I'm in that castle. Because when I was at the cabin a few months back when I went and booked a cabin in the middle of nowhere and stayed there by myself, I ended up scaring myself that much that I... But I, I, I may got possessed, I don't know. But I got sick on the second day I was there and I had to go home a day early. And I don't want to do that while I'm at the castle. So I need to cut the tension a little bit and have something that, you know, cheerful and a little bit more upbeat to read. So this is going to be fantastic in my opinion. Another sort of novella that's a serious one is The Devil's Own Work by Alan Judd. This one, I I was researching some like terrifying books that were a little bit more underrated or a lot of people hadn't really talked about. And this one popped up a few times when I was Googling. This one follows a book critic called Edward who writes a scathing review of an author's book who is called O.M. Tyrrell. And he gets invited to stay at O.M. Tyrrell's house by O.M. Tyrrell himself. And he's like so confused, like, okay, this is like really strange. But the night that they meet at Tyrrell's house, Tyrrell dies. And soon after that, Edward's own career starts to soar and he becomes so successful. But despite all of that, he ends up getting like haunted and terrorized. And I believe there's also an ancient manuscript with an like an old ghost, an old lady ghost who is attaching herself to any writer who possesses this manuscript. I don't know, it feels a little bit Faustian. I've no idea what else, but it's so short. So I feel like this will be perfect to read in the castle, especially comparing it to that one. But there are two longer novels that I also want to get to. The first one being Whisper by Chan Yoko, translated by Roddy Flagg. This one caught my eye in Waterstones. It was facing out by itself and it just felt like it was calling me, like it was drawing me to it. And again I've never heard anyone talk about this one but in this one victims all describe having a voice before they die so we follow Wu Shi Sheng and he is a taxi driver in Taiwan and he is trying to find the voice that killed his wife it says in here that it cleverly combines Taiwanese folklore the Japanese occupation of Taiwan and the long-term mistreatment of the country's aboriginal people into a tale of how the past can still kill so I feel like it'll be like really eye-opening and really terrifying so I feel like this is like my biggest want to read at this castle because I just feel like it'll be so chilling. It's only like 292 pages so I feel like that's pretty decent size. And then the last one that I might get to, might not, is The Whistling by Rebecca Netley. Now I'm a little bit more reserved about this one because it is a more recent kind of ghost story and some of the more recent ghost stories have kind of let me down in not being as atmospheric or as spooky as I've been wanting. But in this one we follow Elspeth and she becomes a nanny to a family in, where was it again? in Skelsey, in the Scottish island of Skelsey. There is a troubled child, the family has secrets. I love the idea of it, I really do, but I've kind of heard this idea before. And while I do love a good haunted house ghost story, a lot of them fall into the same cliches and it usually feels like I'm reading the same story over and over. So that's why I'm a little bit more reserved about reading this at the castle because I just want to read the best. I want to read the best and the spookiest at this castle and I don't want anything to bring it down or like let me down. So I will read the first three first and then if I have time, I'll read this one but please let me know in the comments below if you've read this one if you'd recommend it if it's better than I th I'm thinking it is and I do have faith that I will enjoy it but I just think I, ju I just don't want to ruin my time at this castle you know what I mean by reading a bad book so please let me know if you've read it I would love to know if it's any good or not so yeah this is my TBR for Chillingham Castle and then the next book I'm doing I don't have the books because I will be using my library for this and that is a follow-up to my reading booktube's most hated thrillers vlog because I even said during that vlog that I really want to give these authors a proper chance I felt really unfair reading their worst books first and writing them off so if you haven't seen those vlogs I'll link them down below but yeah I'm going to give four thriller authors a second 
Second Chance. Uh, those authors are Ruth Ware, Riley Sager, Alex Michaelides, and what was the last one again? Peter Swanson. I'm going to read one of each of these authors, what's considered their best books, and I will go to my library, I'll see what they've got, and check them out, and I'll use that for the vlog. So I'm not going to tell you exactly which books I'm going to pick for those authors, because a lot of people in my Most Hated Thrillers vlog commented so many recommendations from those authors, so I think I'm just going to go through those comments and pick out the ones that were mentioned the most favourably out of each of the authors, and, you know, see if my library has them and check them out. If my library doesn't have that specific book, I will just check out another, like, really well-received book from that author. But I'm sure I'll be fine. I'm sure they'll have the books that I need. So yeah, that's going to be happening in mid to late October after I come back from Chillingham Castle. And then finally, the last vlog that I kind of want to do in October is reading books that inspired movies that scarred me as a kid. So there are several movies that I watched when I was far too young, and I will explain why these movies scarred me in the vlog, the actual vlog, I'll not say here, but I will tell you what I'm reading for that vlog. So I will be reading Flowers in the Attic by Virginia Andrews for that vlog. Definitely watch the original movie. I think it was the original movie. I don't know if there's many adaptations. I do know there was a Lifetime adaptation a few years back, but I'm on about like the original original. Yeah, there was a moment that scarred me, and again I will explain more in my vlog, but this one follows a family who go to live with, I think, their grandma, and the kids are left in the attic, and just from what I remember from the movie, it might be totally different in the book, is that the mum, yeah, the mum just pretty much neglects them, and it's quite horrifying and just things happen. <laughs> Once I read it, I'll be able to explain it better, but I'm sure you guys know what this is about anyway. And then I will be reading Jaws by Peter Benchley. I've heard not great things about this book, but I still want to read it anyway. I do own it. I should read it, and I want to read it. The movie is terrifying to me and traumatised me as a kid, and so I am interested to see what the source material was like and how the movie adapted it. So I will be reading this for that vlog, and this one follows a shark that terrorises a small seaside village, essentially, or a small seaside town, and it's during tourist season as well, so there's plenty of bodies for this shark to eat. And it starts off with a woman getting killed by the shark and washing up on the beach, and I think the town chief inspects it. It's been a while since I watched the movie as well, not gonna lie. And I do still enjoy the movie. Even though it scarred me as a kid, I still enjoy the movie. I am reserved on this one as well, but I will go in with an open mind. And then finally, Ring by Koji Suzuki. The Ring, although I'm talking about the American remake of it, I do know there is an original Japanese version of Ring, which I do want to watch. I might end up watching that during the month with my patrons, if I can find it available anywhere. But yeah, this is about a videotape, because videotape that when people watch it, they will die in seven days. The premise itself really terrified me when I saw the remake version of it, and it's always stuck with me since, and I kind of have a little bit of a fear of all televisions because of it. So I'm interested to see what the original source material is like. Oh, it's translated into English by Robert Bay Roma and Glyn Wally. So hopefully that translation is really good, and yeah, it's not too long either. It's nearly 400 pages. I do really want to try and fit in One Piece as well. I've been obsessed with One Piece recently and I really want to read it. But I don't think I will because I've got so much on at the start of the month and so much on at the end of the month. I don't think I can do it. So One Piece will definitely be November, although it's already paining me that I can't just pick it up now. Anyway, that was my October TBR. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all the comments down below. Let me know what you're reading in October, what readathons you're taking part in, anything you're doing for Halloween. Let me know everything. I'd love to chat to you. A huge thank you to my patrons for supporting my content. If you would like to join my Patreon or follow me on any social media, then all the links are down in the description box. But yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye.